Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Kinsey. And today we're going to talk about super rare games, the publisher, not just super rare games. <laughs> Very <in> important to know. <laughs> <laughs> and they're a publisher out of London, England, who have been putting out physical copies of Switch games in limited quantities. And they've been around about a year. I think they started February of 2018. And as of this recording, we have all of their releases. Yeah, this is going to be really cool. So we're going to show you all of those and uh, show you some gameplay footage. Let's take a look. All right, guys, I'm gonna start with the most current release and then kind of work backwards. Mm -hmm. So this one here is called Cube 2, and this immediately reminded me of Portal. Oh yeah, yes. totally. So it's a first person puzzle game. And again, it's sci-fi very much like Portal. Mm -hmm. I will say though that it definitely has its own vibe. It's not it's not a carbon copy of Portal, mm -hmm. which, is, which is great. Uh, very physical based puzzles. The whole premise is that you're on this planet, it's kind of built up of cubes, and you can manipulate the white ones. And so you'll see these throughout the, uh, the level you have these different gloves one of them will change the color of the cube which has different properties and then the other glove will manipulate it mm -hmm. and you do it in really interesting ways this game starts off fairly easy and then gets very complex yeah it was definitely uh challenging my brain a little bit here <laughs> but it's but it's very much like portal you kind of have to just sort of like lean into it a little bit and try stuff mm -hmm. and play around with stuff because every single section is something new yeah you know it's, I, it's a humbling I, game because you're like, yeah. I got this. Oh, no, I don't. Oh, I know. Or, or sometimes <laughs> you'll stumble upon the solution. You'll be like, wow, I'm really glad I stumbled upon that because I never would have known. <laughs> but I do think it's a really fun game. I played it a bunch. It's beautiful looking, mm -hmm. very much, again, like Portal in its sort of style. But, uh, you know, holds its own. It's cool. Yeah. And next up, they did a double pack. I know. This is cool. Yeah. But it's Knights of Pen and Paper 1 and 2. Yes. And I really like this game, actually. Like, the I, the, the premise of it, I was like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. But it's basically a group of people playing D&D, &D, and you're basically taking the position of the players. Yeah. So yeah, you so have you, a DM so, standing there. Yeah, so you see the, t the, the table there. You mm -hmm. see your characters around it. You get, like you said, the dungeon master is right there. It's... At first, it, again, it's a little bit off-putting. You're like, what is this game? What is yeah. happening here, yeah. right? But then you realize that, that the environment changes around the table like like your imagination. Yeah. Works. You know, it's cool. Yeah. It's really fun, and you can, like, micro your characters a little bit. Mm -hmm. And even the character creation is sort of fun, because they just go into, like, all these, like, random stereotypes. Like, yeah. My, in my game right now, the pizza guy is my warrior. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, You'll the have stranger. like office workers. Yeah, and stuff there's like, like yeah. an office worker. There's like a stranger guy who's basically like cloaked, hooded figure with no face. Oh, okay. And then they have like Wolfie. He's like a wolf man. <laughs> and E.T. Yeah. It's great. Oh, I know. So it's definitely got a lot of personality, not only mm -hmm. in the, the character creation, but also just it breaks the fourth wall all the time. Yeah. Because again, this is almost like a game within a game. So you're 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 the character sitting at the table, but around you is the RPG that you're a part of. You also control the uh, the, the DM a little bit, so you'll tell mm -hmm. people when to sleep. Also, you'll be able to control a little bit like the the encounters and which ones you go on. Yep. Um, it's It's... It's pretty deep for an RPG. I mean, if you like yeah. old school Dungeons and Dragons and you like 16-bit graphics, it's awesome. I you yeah. went to, went down the rabbit hole a little I bit did. with this one, didn't you? I was like, oh, I need to play that for the video, and then four hours later. Yeah, <laughs> I know it sucks you in. It's very yeah. cool. Uh, next up for me is a game that was a total surprise, and that is uh, the Adventure Pals Collector's That's Edition. So yeah, well, this is one of those games. It, the reason why I was a surprise because you look at that cover and you're not sure. Is this going to be a kid's game? Is this mm -hmm. going to be... You just... I, I didn't know, yeah. right? And this is another one I got sucked into big time. So it's a 2D platforming game. Really funny. Uh, great graphics. The thing that stood out for me with this is that the level design is perfect. Yeah. Like, it, it's not frustrating. Uh, the controls and the way it jumps and the way you control your character is perfect. Like, you can tell this is made by somebody who really mm -hmm. studied what makes a good game. I don't know. I was really blown away by this. I was very surprised. Yeah. And it's co-op. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. It's really fun. It kind of reminds me like the humor and the graphics a little bit of like Castle Crushers. Oh, yep. But mm -hmm. only more platformer and less beat-em-up. But yep. like I got, I gotta say this game's really, really cool. And yep. like I like it when the giraffes do the helicopter. Yep. <laughs> yep. I know. There's a ton of stuff to find in this. A lot of like little collectible things mm -hmm. that you collect uh, cupcakes and yeah. yeah, this is, this is a cool game. 
Next up is a game that we could not come to a consensus as to how to pronounce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it, uh, should I try it? Go, give it give it a whirl. Steradin? Stare stare. Stirden? Stirden? Stirden binary stars. Stirden? I'm, I'm probably Stirden. making this more complex than it is. And if it's if it's an actual proper name, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but so this is basically like a roguelike uh shoot 'em up. Yeah. Yeah, very much like kinda like R type ish. Uh it looks really cool. It seems like it might be a lot of fun. I gotta be completely honest with you. I play a lot of shoot 'em ups and I was dying all the time in this yeah. game. So I don't know what it is. I don't. I don't it's like know. combining like a shmup, which can already be really difficult. Yeah. And you're like, by the way, it's also a roguelike. Yeah. And you're like, oh. I know. I know. So, <laughs> uh, I need to put more time into this game and just see if I need to figure it out a little bit. Maybe there's some upgrading that I need to do. But uh, so far, it seems pretty cool. I don't know. We'll see. It looks cool. Yeah, it does look cool. <laughs> Next up, do you did you play this at all? Earlier games in the series. Oh, okay, you mm -hmm. did. So this is N plus plus. Plus, 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 plus. Yes, they plus, just plus. Keep going. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, this is a really interesting game to me because this is this is somebody like a developer who is really laser focused on simply just gameplay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because as you guys are seeing here in the footage, it looks like a Commodore sixty four game. Yeah. You know, and no no offense to Commodore sixty four, but or even like an old MS DOS game. Yeah. You can tell they basically were like, no, we're just going to focus on the gameplay. Yeah. You know. Uh, so it's a physics-based 2D platforming game that is pretty tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how far you got in, re, re, you know, previously. And this one's supposed to be like really long too. Yeah, like, there's like 2,600 levels, 2,300 levels. Oh, look at no, no, it says 4,340 handcrafted levels. Dang, add those two numbers I gave you together. <laughs> Yeah, so a ton of content here. I guess this is for the person who really, really likes a challenge. Mm -hmm. Kind of, I, immediately I was kind of reminded of Super Meat Boy. That's, oh, definitely. That yeah. sort of style of platforming where you don't mind dying a lot, you know. Um, not necessarily my favorite thing, although I can appreciate it, but, yeah. uh, you know, it, it just takes a lot of trial and error. Mm -hmm. And I do think the simple graphics, like, offer a kind of charm for this oh, series. Oh, absolutely, know? yeah. And yeah. I think this is the last game that oh, they're going to have. Okay. They're not going to go in plus plus. Plus. <laughs> well, if you've created 4,000 levels, I mean... You're like, whoo! Yeah, done. I know, okay, <laughs> whoo! <laughs> That's so funny. Next up is a game you have played a bunch of. Snake Pass! Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, do you remember when this first came out? Because mm -hmm. I remember it was kind of like after the big uh, Switch push, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, it was one of the earlier, like, eShop only games. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when it came out, it, it seemed like, oh wow, what's this game? And you know, Sneak something new. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I really like saying it. I know you do. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, but this is kind of a 3D puzzle game where you're basically in a level trying to collect all these orbs and all these items to move on. Mm -hmm. And you have to like unlock the gate with different items and things like that. But it's all, you're a snake and you have to like wrap yourself around poles and stuff to get up. up. With, I mean, with snake physics, with right? With snake physics. It's so hard to explain, but it's yeah. like... The controls, there's a control to move forward, a control to raise your head, so that's yeah. how you would move forward and like wrap around stuff, but it's an art to control the yeah, snake. Yeah, because you, you can also kind of tighten your muscles a little bit, but I think it's a left trigger or something mm -hmm. like that, and so that kind of helps you grip, like say a, a pole or whatever. Yeah, it, but, it takes some finesse. Yes, yeah, so this is a game where <laughs> You definitely have to play through the tutorial. You have to have patience. And like you mm -hmm. mentioned in the beginning, don't try to go for, because every level has extra stuff. Yeah. Like, you know, things hanging off ledges that you can try to go for. And there's there's definitely, you know, at the end of a, a level, it'll show you how, how much stuff you collected. Yeah. So you want to collect that stuff, but uh, your recommendation was don't do that in the beginning because you yeah. need to learn the controls. If you see something over a ledge and you're already struggling with the controls, it, don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Because you lose a decent amount of progress when you die. Depending on if you hit like this little checkpoint in the middle, you'll you'll either lose all of your progress or half of it. Mm. Which when you're trying to learn the controls and wrap around things and you fall a lot, just finish the first couple levels and get a hang of it. But now, so, but now you've played it more than I have. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you like the controls at that point? I do. Like, yeah, I, I you kind that. of... Because at first I found trying to wrap around stuff, I wouldn't wrap around tight enough and I would run out of snake because he's like going through and then I'd yeah. fall. Um, but once you get the like actually like going around stuff and like getting the climbing down where you can kind of like serpentine up things, yeah, 
then it gets a lot more fun once you get a handle on it. And that's the puzzle aspect of mm -hmm. this, right? Exactly. And, and it's very unique. I mean, I don't know of any games I've personally ever played mm -hmm. that's quite like this. Yeah. So that's what's cool about it. And he's got personality. He's got yep. a little bird friend. Yep, yep, yep. Great and, graphics, yeah. actually. I mean, yeah. they're, they're cool. Yeah. All right, next up is a game that I played on the PlayStation 4 and also on previous generations. Mm -hmm. And that is Worms WMD. Yes. And so is, is that stand for like Worms of Mass Destruction or something like I that? I hope so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So, you know, we've all played a Worms game. Mm -hmm. And here's what I would say about this is that I always forget how much I enjoy them until I go back and I replay yep. them. It's so funny because it's, it's definitely not a series that I think of about first to jump into mm -hmm. but every time i do i have a blast I literally i love worms games i know they're so much fun so uh, how would you describe it um i like that this one that kind of went back to 2d yes because i know they tried the 3d for a while yeah and it, mm. yeah yeah it doesn't need it it, it doesn't, doesn't need, need it. it yeah and i don't know i just really like worms yeah so if you haven't played the game before i mean basically it's it's teams against teams of other worms, mm -hmm. and they're kind of they're they're military, you know, like they have different they have bazookas and machine guns mm -hmm. and, and parachutes and all this sort of stuff, grenades, yeah. and essentially the entire environment is destructible, mm -hmm. and that's key. So you're basically trying to blow out huge chunks of the level to get where you need to go mm -hmm. or get a better you know vantage point. Yep, uh, it's, climbing up. Sometimes in this game, there's even like little drop points where there's like oh there's like a sniper rifle up, yeah. up on top of that cliff, yeah, or, or like a Gatling gun. Or like in the, in the game I was playing yesterday, there was a tank you could yeah. pop into and just like do massive amounts of damage. Yeah. You know? It's so much fun. There's like the helicopter that you can get into. Oh, and then yeah. like, it's kind of weird to control. So you're like up in the air, but you're like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. you're just like blanket shooting. <laughs> <laughs> So that is one of the fun parts of this game is when things go wrong. Yeah. This is one of those games where even if you're losing, sometimes you laugh. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. 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 It's, I don't know. I can't I know. speak highly enough about worms. I know. It's so awesome. So that's cool to have physical on the Switch. Next up is a game that I originally played, I think, on the 3DS, and that is uh, Mutant Muds Collection. Mm -hmm. So, um, have you played these games yeah. before? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I would say, so first of all, I would say that Mutant Muds, in my opinion, actually, its best version is on the three, uh, 3DS, mm -hmm. because I do, it's a game that does have some depth to it as far yeah. as the, the level design. So I kind of dig that sort of 3D element, and it's missing, I mean, it plays exactly the same here. It's just that I miss that 3D yeah. aspect of it. The depth of field when you're doing like jumping between the foreground and the background does look really cool. It's really cool. But... I mean, it's totally gimmicky on the 3DS. You yeah. don't need it, but it's so cool. It includes a game on here that I hadn't played before. Mm. Do you like me some puzzle games? Yeah, so it's kind of like a, it feels like a match three game kind of. Um, it looks kind of like Snood. Snood? Is that a... Is that a like, is, well, that, is that a phone game or something? It, yeah, it was like an old PC like match game, but it was more like Bust to Move. But it has like the little faces and like the. Oh, like, yeah. It, it wouldn't surprise me if it's based on that actually. Yeah, looks like Match Three, but Snood. It reminded me of another mobile game called Drop Seven, where that was a. a it, 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 it's actually not a Match Three, but basically, you know, you have a bunch of blocks and you're trying to break them out based on what's around you. So that's kind of how this game plays. Mm -hmm. I know it's super vague, but anyways, or this like is like Tetris Attack. Yeah, this is a this is a cool little <laughs> collection of platforming and just all the stuff within that kind of world. And the next game we're going to talk about is Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. One of the weirdest titles ever. But also the best. <laughs> it is so, <laughs> this is so interesting and unique. This game really took me by surprise. Oh, definitely. And it's so weird. The first time I played this game was actually at an indie game museum or indie game exhibit at a museum. Okay. Like forever ago. Huh. And so when I saw it was coming out physical, I had to get it. Yeah. But I think it's definitely designed to be co-op. That's exactly what I felt because yeah. it, it seems like... You're in this like spaceship, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like this big spaceship and like you need someone to maneuver it, someone to yeah. man the gun. Like there's a whole bunch of jobs to be had. Yeah, there's someone who controls the the direction of it. There's someone who controls the, the shields. Mm -hmm. uh, there's different types of weapons and they all have basically stations within the ship. Yep. And you can play the single player. That's actually what you guys are watching on the screen now. And it's designed to do that because it basically maps out the functions to like the directional pad, I mm -hmm. believe. So 
it's playable, but you definitely get that feeling like, wow, I wish I had a couple friends here. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> you, know? you have like a little bit panic moments where you're like, wait, yes. do I have to like run over here? Yeah, we were trying to do multiple <laughs> things at once. You're like, oh my gosh, you know, yeah, it's crazy. It's like stressful, but in like a kind of a fun spaceship simulator way, but yeah. in a really cute little package. Yeah, it's it's a really interesting game because like I said, you're controlling that ship in the middle of the screen, but you're exploring around this environment mm -hmm. and you're kind of doing a little bit of puzzle solving, but you're also shooting stuff. It's mm -hmm. it's it's there's a lot going on in this one. It's yeah, cool. It has a lot of challenge. Mm -hmm. um, it's like like we were saying, it's just really different. Yeah. and you can like upgrade your ship. Yeah, and yep. yeah, very cool. It's super awesome. This next one here, I played a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm on the fence about it. So this is called. It's so hard. <laughs> I, yeah, it's it's weird. So this is a, called Shelter Generations, and there's mm -hmm. technically two games in here. Mm -hmm. And I think you played this more recently than I have, so. And so it's it's kind of a different take on a survival game. Yeah. But what I have a hard time with in this game is that you're like trying to protect your like pups. Yeah. Or I guess they're, I don't know, kittens? Or if you're a bobcat and you have kittens or pups? Uh, kittens? sure. Yeah, kittens, I guess. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know. That's a good question, actually. I guess pups would be, a, whatever. <laughs> this is a rabbit hole. Yeah. But like you're trying to like teach them how to like scavenge and survive. You have to bring and... them food in the beginning. You yep. have to kill rabbits to mm -hmm. keep them alive. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's kind of going through the life of keeping them alive and like showing them how to do stuff. Yeah. And it's definitely a different take on a survival game. Yeah. I would say that if you, it, you know, as you guys can see on the screen here, it's art style is like something I've never seen before. So yeah. if you're kind of looking for something with like a new experience, something a little bit different, you mm -hmm. definitely check it out. Yeah, the art style is actually really cool. It is. It's like the weird pattern shaded, yeah. like it looks really awesome. Yeah. This next one here, you, uh, we were we were chatting about how, <laughs> how tough this game mm -hmm. can be. Yeah, this is the Flame and the Flood. And actually I played this while I was camping. Oh, okay, I was which is literally perfect. sitting by a fire at night with my Switch oh, really? playing this game <laughs> okay. in the middle of the wilderness. It so, was so surreal. Did, did that inspire you or did that freak you out? Because it's <laughs> a little bit of both. Yeah. At least I had like my, you know, my camping Doritos and my beer. So <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't scavenging. Yeah. But like this game, I felt like there's a really big hurdle in the very beginning. Yes. Where, you know, you're getting thirsty, you're getting food, but you don't have any upgrades. And then you have to build a trap to catch a rabbit. Cause you, the first time I tried this and failed miserably, I was like, let me just pick some berries and some, I'll be fine. Right. I'll be fine. No, <laughs> you will not be fine. Oh, that's right. I think I, I did that too. And I was poisoned <laughs> yeah. for a while. Yeah. And then like at one point I didn't have a way to like fight anything and a boar broke my arm. So then instead That's of focusing on eating, I had to go make a splint because yes. my arm was broken. Yeah. <laughs> this game is very stressful. That's right. Yeah. I know. Although I will say though, again, I, I do like these games mm -hmm. because they're so unpredictable. Yeah. You know? And so every, every time you play it, you can have a little bit of a different story, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And I noticed even when I did fail absolutely miser miserably and die of thirst or hunger, or being attacked by a boar. Like, <laughs> I didn't really have a problem. Like, I wasn't like, oh, I have to start over. I was right. like, okay, I'm gonna start over and this is what I'm gonna do differently. I'm gonna yep. try a different approach. Yep. And it's really fun. And if you can get far enough, <laughs> you can also start upgrading your little boat because you can kind of travel between regions in this on your little raft that you yep. have. Yep. And like you travel with your dog and I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very cool game. So mm -hmm. it's cool to see a physical version of this. Yeah, That's it's awesome. really cool. So this next one, <sighs> love or hate this game <laughs> so this is called human fall flat mm -hmm. this is a this is part of a series of games that are kind of like a goat simulator mm -hmm. or surgeon simulator they all have the same wonky controls. yeah octodad mm -hmm. you know where basically they're using those kind of physics wonky yeah. controls i find them incredibly frustrating it's kind of like have you played like gang beasts huh. because gang beasts has the same little like nondescript characters but it's a fighting game Oh, so you're okay. like, blah, 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 you know? <laughs> but you're trying Just to like fight slapping. people. Yeah. <laughs> but this I actually played at co-op and it's pretty huh. fun until it wasn't. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was having so much fun playing it. I love yeah. the, the quirky commentary. Like along the way, you'll find these little like radio things that are little tutorials mm. that tell you how to do something. Cause you're like, they're introducing something new in the level and this is how they're telling you. And it's like British and quippy and it's <laughs> yeah. fun. I like it, yeah, you know? That's right. Um, and but at a certain point, I got super far in it. And then there's this one level. That there's we, always that one level. That we tried forever. So, so okay, so, so you, you were doing this co-op? <laughs> yeah, I played oh, co-op. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I absolutely loved it until I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> 
But I love these like weird control, Do you? like, yeah. cause that's half the fun. You're like, oh, I just need to like climb those stairs. It'll be fine. And you're like, well, that's the thing. Like, yeah, <laughs> every, yeah. Something in every other game that would be simple yeah. is completely like a challenge in yeah. a game like this, which is so funny. And yeah. I love, like in the very beginning, they teach you how to like jump onto higher levels. Like just to like jump, oh. you know? But like, it's funny cause it's like, okay, put your arms up and then run. So then I did that like all the time. I'm sure there's a smoother way to do it, <laughs> but then I'm like, oh, I have to get up there. <laughs> <Ugh>. like, <laughs> like, I don't know. These physics make me laugh so hard that's funny. when doing the smallest, stupidest thing. Huh. So that's about the first year plus, plus plus, plus, plus. <laughs> <laughs> of releases from Super Rare Games. And I think they're off to a great start because there's some killer titles in here. There definitely are. Now, if you guys would like to know more, I'll post a link to their website down in the video description below. I'm gonna be curious to see what they come up with next. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me at Kinzilla, K-N-S-Z-I-L-L-A, -L -L on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Wow, you're everywhere <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Take care. I want to mention here at the end that while the physical versions of these may be sold out if they're brand new or somewhat kind of expensive to get used on, say, eBay, if you just want to play the games, all of them are available for download through the Nintendo eShop, and many of them are 20 bucks or less. So that's a great way to play these games if you want. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.